Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel and welcome to episode 10 of our DIY campervan conversion. In this episode we're going to be tackling the diesel heater. We've heard great things about this thing online uh, from other reviewers and we think it'll be a great asset for colder weathers to keep us nice and warm in the van. So today we're going to tackle uh, installing it. We're going to be going through the installation step by step so you can follow along to have a good idea of how to do it yourselves. When you first take everything out of the box, it can seem pretty intimidating. There's lots of different parts and components, um, but once you start putting things together, it all makes sense. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's go ahead and, and drop it into where we think we're going to want it. In terms of the placement of the heater itself, there's only a couple things we have to pay attention to. The first is that this uh, intake uh, needs to be kind of clear of obstructions. So you don't want to put it right up against a wall because it won't be able to suck enough air uh, into the heater. And then the other thing is that on this side, these are obviously going to be the outputs of the heat. So again, you don't want this to be right up against a wall because we're going to have tubes coming out of here with our hot air. Uh, so we need some space for those tubes. So we think this placement is pretty good for now. We have our two ends that are uh, free of obstructions. Now I'm just going to pull the heater off of its metal plate and uh, we'll get a pretty good idea of where the metal plate has to be. So we're actually going to be drilling a few holes into the bottom of the van itself through the metal. So we just want to make sure that there's nothing under there that's going to block that because we're going to be having the exhaust output and the fresh air intake uh, through these two tubes. So. so let's head under the van. We're going to see if the placement of this is in a good spot. So we've actually decided to move it uh, this way just a little bit and I'll show you why once I go under the van. Just pay attention to this little spot here. Uh, this was actually a hole that was already made in the floor. So we just stuck a zip tie down and uh, I'll show you that uh, underneath the van so you have an idea of where this is going to be relative to our zip tie. So you can see our zip tie is hanging down here. This is towards the front of the van, towards the passenger seat. And so our metal plate is basically going to be kind of in this area here. And you can see the reason why we moved it this way is that if it was any more this way, it might be really hard to attach our exhaust and our input and to just bolt all the uh, the little bolts that are going to be coming out here because we're kind of blocked by this beam of the van. The instructions said for the bigger holes, they're going to be 26 millimeters diameter and the smaller holes would be 7.5. We used bits that were just slightly bigger than that. I think we used a 31 for the big holes and maybe a 7.8 for the small holes. And the reason we did that was just to make sure that there won't be any sharp edges uh, inside here uh, that is going to be touching our, our inlets or our outlets. You can see a couple of the holes did overlap here, but uh, it's not the end of the world. As long as the holes line up for all the things that need to go through, uh, there's not really a problem. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to put our, our bolts uh, into the bottom of the heater. We're just going to put it through, make sure it fits. Uh, we want to make sure the holes were in the right spot. Sitting in. So everything fits well through the holes which is a good sign. <laughs> We're just going to clean up the edges a little bit. So we just sprayed the area with some uh, rust preventive uh, spray paint. Uh, we let that dry it up and now we're ready to install the heater itself. You can probably see in the footage, but our, our floor is not exactly flat. Uh, we have some bumps. Uh, it's not very even. So if we put our metal base here, you can see it wobbles a little bit. So all we're going to do to fix that is just put a couple pieces of some wood under this side here to shim it up. 
uh, to keep it nice and level. We also cut out this section of our plastic step uh, just so that the heater can sit nice and flush against the metal without being tilted up on an angle. Now that the heater's in, we're gonna go underneath and install both the combustion air intake and the waste exhaust. So this shiny one is for the exhaust and the black one is for the intake of the combustion air. Now we can attach the diesel tube to this one here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the other end of our diesel cable up through this little hole. And luckily we didn't have to make this hole, it was already there and it's pretty much exactly where we needed to be. Uh, so we'll just use it. So we just came back under the van uh, to show you guys a little bit about what exactly we're doing uh, with the exhaust tube and the intake tube. So we tightened up all the clamps from the exhaust tube, the diesel tube, and the uh, fresh air intake tube on that side. When it comes to the exhaust tube, the only important things to note is that we shouldn't have too many curves in the tube. So you should have maximum two or three 90 degree angles, no more than that. Another important thing is that the end of the exhaust tube should be the lowest point of the entire tube because if any condensation occurs inside the tube we want it to be able to drip out and out the end of the tube. And in terms of the muffler it should be oriented like we see in the photo here so up and down not flat and there should be one side of the muffler with a little hole in it the other side has a hole for the bolt. This one with the hole should be the one that's pointing down because uh, like with the tube if any condensation occurs in here it will allow the water to drip out from this uh, point down here. On the other end of our uh, fresh combustion air intake, we put the filter here. Uh, we strapped it on with uh, a clamp. And we want to make sure that this is pointing towards the rear of the van. If it was facing towards the front, it could accumulate lots of rain and debris. Um, so we want it facing towards the back to kind of make sure that it's always going to be clean. And then lastly, we used a couple of zip ties just to tie it down to pieces of the van so that it doesn't move around too much. So this is the tube that we just pulled up from underneath the van. It connects uh, directly to the underneath of the heater itself. Um, so basically the first thing that we want to install on that tube is the pump. And the instructions are pretty clear. It's like the first tip on the front page of the instructions that say that that line of fuel has to be 1.5 meters to 2 meters. And it also says that on the heater itself. Uh, it's one of the few things in the instructions that are actually pretty clear. Um, so we're going to make sure we're going to cut this tube at uh, around one and a half or two meters. And we can install the fuel pump. So the way to know which direction the fuel is going to be flowing through the pump. Uh, on one of the sides there should be an arrow. So that direction is uh, obviously pointing towards the heater. So that's the side that we want to attach our tube to. I'm going to put a couple of these on before we do anything else. And now we can insert this into the black tube. And before we put the tube on the other side, we're going to put this piece on our pump. Uh, it's what's going to allow us to attach it to the wall. We forgot to film us <laughs> screwing our pump in, uh, but this is what it looks like. The instructions simply say that it should be installed at about a 30 degree angle upwards. That means the out of the pump should be higher than the in of the pump. So this is the diesel container. We were worried at first that we didn't have the screws for it, but it turns out they're in there. <laughs> So this will be mounted to the wall above our heater with those little holes here. So what we need to do right now is actually drill a hole at the bottom of the tank. It's going to be a 
about an inch above the bottom so that the diesel can flow out. And we're gonna install this little thing right here. So the way to do this, now we're gonna do it anyways, we're gonna slide the tube into the hole that we drilled all the way out, install this, then pull it out into the bottom. So the uptake of the diesel out of the container has to be uh, obviously near the bottom of the container, uh, but you also don't want it to be all the way at the bottom because there could be some debris and sediment accumulating at the bottom of the tank and we don't want all that to get sucked through the tube and to clog up our filter and our pump. So we're actually going to install it about an inch above the bottom of the container itself. The instruction manual that comes with the diesel heater is pretty bad to be honest. They don't mention a lot of specifics like what diameter drill bit you would need for this. So we're kind of estimating, uh, we're going to try with a quarter inch for now and if we need to make the hole a little bit bigger then we will So the quarter inch was not quite big enough, can't really get the threads through. So we'll try making it a little bit bigger just by shimming it around. So this piece does come with two uh, rubber gaskets and we want to put one of them on before we pull it through because obviously we're going to want one on the inside and then one on the outside. We're not going to do the full connection of these two pieces just yet. Uh, we're just going to tape them together so that we can pull it through and then once we pull it out through the bottom then we'll do a full connection between the diesel tube and this piece here. Now we can put our second o-ring on this side and then we'll use the bolt that comes with it to tighten them together. So now we can go ahead and tighten our two clamps here. The next step is going to be to install the filter. And it's almost impossible to know from the instructions which direction the diesel is supposed to flow through this thing. There is maybe one small indication in the instruction manual. Uh, there is a little arrow that shows kind of the direction that it might be flowing. But we also just looked up online from other resources and it seems to us that the diesel is going to be flowing into the transparent side and out the blue side. We're going to place two of these onto here before we do anything else. So we have one last connection to do and that's between this and the intake of the pump. But before we do that we're actually going to go to the store and fill this up with a little bit of diesel. So the reason why we filled it up with a little bit of diesel before we connect it to the pump is because we actually want the diesel to get uh, almost to the end of this before we connect it to the pump. And the reason why we have to do that is because the only way that the pump is lubricated is with the diesel itself. So if this entire tube was empty at first, then basically that pump would have to pump air through it for quite a while until the diesel made its way all the way through the tube. And during all that time, the pump would not be lubricated, which is not great for pumps. They need to be lubricated to work well. So if you're pulling all that air through the tube uh, before it finally gets lubricated, then you're doing a little bit of damage to the pump. So you kind of want to get the diesel as close to here as possible before connecting it. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play around with the elevation of the 
container relative to the pump. We're just gonna play around with it until we get the diesel as close to the pump as possible. And then we can make that final connection between uh, this tube here and the pump itself. So this one we're gonna put in here first. We're gonna get it as far as we can. And before we connect this to this, we wanna put two of these clamps around the tube. Our diesel is right around here, which is perfect. So now we can connect these. So what we're doing now is attaching the tubes onto the end cap of the heater. So obviously we're putting the tube and then a ring clamp. So we made the mistake of buying a kit that doesn't come with the air vents with it. So that was just an oversight on our part. So basically we're going to have to kind of install our own venting system. So we'll just connect our four small tubes into this big four inch tube. That will go into one of these. And then this final vent will be what's actually on the inside of our van. So now that we finished all the installation of the tubing and piping, it's now time to do the wiring. And this is actually probably going to be the easiest part of the whole installation. There's only three things we need to connect and they all have their own unique shape, so it's pretty impossible to do it wrong. <laughs> There's going to be one to connect to the heater itself. There's going to be one to connect to the pump. One of them connects to the uh, digital screen. And then the last ones will go directly to the battery. Our last step is going to be connecting the system to our 12 volt battery. But one important thing we have to do is to use a voltage regulator. The instructions on the manual say that the heater works optimally between 11.5 and 12.8 volts. It's the second point that they put on the front page here. So we know that we're going to be using ours with a solar system, which means that uh, pretty much daily our voltage is going to be way higher than 12.8. Uh, when the battery is being charged, your voltage can go up to you know 13.7, 13.8 volts, uh, which is of course too much for the heater to handle. So we basically have to use this voltage regulator to uh, ensure that the voltage is ne is always going to be at exactly 12 volts. So that's what we're going to install uh, between the heater and the battery. Once we attach this, everything should hopefully start running. So we should see the LCD screen turn on. So I guess we'll just press the power button and see if things start turning on. Oh, I hear the heater starting. There's a couple of arrows flashing under here. That means we have intake and exhaust working. The fan looks like it's turning as well. This little pump logo just turned on. Says uh, error zero 01. Looks like we have an error already, E01. So we think we know what our problem was. Uh, we were getting error zero 01, which means the voltage was too low. And we're pretty sure that that's because the voltage regulator that we were using was not rated for a high enough wattage. So we looked it up online, and uh, when the heater kind of first turns on, the first thing it does is just turn on the fan, which is a, a pretty low wattage. But then 
as it starts to ramp up, it starts to need more and more wattage because it wants to create a lot of heat. And that's when it pulls its maximum wattage, which could be up to around 120 watts. During that peak time, we obviously need a voltage regulator that is rated for a high enough wattage. The one we were using before was only 48 watts. Uh, so we upgraded to one that's uh, rated for 144 watts. So we're going to plug this one up, we're going to run another test, and hopefully the heater will run smoothly. Not sure if you can hear it running right now, but we do have uh, both the pump and the heater working. But everything is looking good right now, it, we've gone farther than we ever have before. So our heater is now uh, at the maximum temperature, our voltage has climbed back up around to 11 volts and we're getting lots of hot air coming out of our vent, which is fantastic news. So we've already reached our desired temperature of uh, 17 degrees in here. So you can hear the fan and the pump are slowing down a lot. We didn't get any errors this time, which is uh, great news. That means we installed it correctly. So now that the diesel heater is fully installed, it works perfectly. The last step before we continue anything else is to install one of these. So you should never ever be using a diesel heater inside your van without also using a carbon monoxide detector. So that pretty much completes the installation of the diesel heater. There's just a couple things left to do, um, but we won't show them to you because they're a little boring. Uh, the first one is to put some sealant under the van where we drilled all the holes. And then we're also just going to tidy up the wires so that they look a little bit cleaner and neater and we don't uh, trip on them or anything. <laughs> so if you have any questions about the installation, how to do it yourself, uh, please don't hesitate. Uh, ask us in the comments. We hope this was helpful for you. Uh, best of luck if you want to try it yourselves. Take care. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next episode.